Hi, I'm Cam, director of Stories of Bike. Stay watching to the end for some special info about this episode. When I was a lot younger, I never saw my dad and my granddad ride. I did, however, constantly exposed to motorcycles. My dad always had photos of bikes, kept a collection of old helmets in the garage. I knew my grandfather rode old Enfields and Eases and my dad had a couple of old bikes, Suzuki, including the Harley. They always had a good collection of photos. I kind of grew up, I used to read Jupiter's Travels and Zen in the Arts, so the idea of long motorcycle touring has always been appealing. And then I had planned it when I was you know, 10 years time, you know, getting more financed and having an appropriate motorcycle. But I realized I was at a point in my life where there wasn't a whole lot really keeping me tied to one place. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna do it, I may as well do it now and no time like the present. So I quit my job and took some casual work and I've been prepping for the trip. I guess for me, the plan is to basically see if I can take a bike from Sydney to London but it seemed strange to take an appropriate motorcycle, so what I'm going to be taking is a 45-year-old Enfield, which is essentially the same motorcycle that my grandfather had at my age. Same technology, similar vintage. I'm basically going to ride that and see if I can make it to London on it from Sydney. I used to work at a small dive bar up in Brisbane. And one of the buses there and cleaners was this Brazilian. We were both bad on motorcycles, always talking motorcycles while scrubbing the bar. He'd show me these photos of his hometown back in Brazil, these beautiful hills. And I, mean, I had this thing while working at a bar at the end of the night, we'd say, you're having a beer. And his English wasn't that great. So I'd always just say, the answer is yes, before we'd have a chance to finish. You know, if you clean the bathrooms, the answer is yes. It was always kind of regardless of the answer, it was always yes. Anyway, he called me up uh, 18 months after we parted ways and said, mate, I wanted to do a ride around South America. Do you want to come? So for me, it was just like, well, yeah, the answer is yes. It's always yes. I remember the day we meant to set out on the trip. We got up before dawn and I, I pressed the starter button and I, I just laughed. It was this little 150cc that just had this tint to it. It was like a lawnmower. Riding through South America on such a small motorcycle was definitely one of contrasts. For me, it was meeting people along the way, chatting to them, talking about the journey. Also contrast with the constant battling of riding a particularly slow and unsuitable motorcycle uh, through some of the most interesting roads in South America. But people I met along the way because of those issues. So I decided to try it on a 45-year-old engine. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Basically, I wanted to do this trip on an Enfield for a while. I was looking and looking and looking, I obviously had some work. I wanted to be a 350, I wanted to be uh, older than 40 years old, preferably older than that. Eventually I found one, it was running okay. It's a, a 1969 Enfield, uh, made in, in Redditch, the 1967 engine, also made in Redditch, with a lot of Indian bolt-on parts. It's a simple air-cooled engine, obviously carbureted. It's got a swing arm, uh, which a lot of the earlier Enfields did, which I'm grateful for. For me, the, the bike, it runs most of the time. I can get it tracked along well. The good thing about these bikes is they're so simple to work on that when they do go wrong or if something does happen, it's easy to fix. It's good to adjust and you can usually do it on the side of the road with the, with the Leathermans and a smile. Now for me, it's the perfect bike for long distance touring. How can you not like the vintage look of it? I mean, they haven't really changed much in the styling for you know, 60 years. There's certainly a big appeal on that. There's nothing quite like pulling up and everyone always asks what year it is and a lot of people can't pick it. My, my father rides a 2012 Enfield Chrome, one of the newer models. And stylistically, they're almost interchangeable. Except obviously he uses 500 cc's and fuel injected. I think with a lot of things, you always really like the things that challenge you. Getting used to the shift, it's obviously a right side shift, left side brake, which is different to all the other bikes I've ridden. So you learn to kind of adapt to that. It'll be interesting to see how our relationship is at the end of the trip. 
at the moment it's somewhat temperamental, but as I said, you always like the things that challenge you. So I lost a few people close to me to suicide and a recurring theme in their notes was they didn't they lived up to expectations, they didn't know what it was like to, to be a man and I realised I didn't actually know the answer myself. So I guess I should probably try and find that out. For me the best way to go about that was to try and find out along the way of a trip such as from Sydney to London what the expectations are in different societies of being a man and what it means to kind of grow up. So for me to do that, I, I took you know almost an icon. I mean, my grandfather, basically the same motorcycle as him, try and use that as inspiration as I could make my way across London. I'm looking forward to the challenges. I'm looking forward to the people I meet. I'm looking forward to maybe finding some answers to things I don't know yet.